I have spent so much money on gaming mice that my budget has been cut. And I've been tasked with finding a mouse in a budget where no real enthusiast dares travel. The $10 price bracket on Amazon. The dark realm where you'll find brands known as Josephism 001, Ofruit, Exegical, Velocephanar, and Mew Mew Cat. The mice I choose will be tested to my satisfaction and then given a rating based on the following. Comfort, quality, looks, performance, and advertising. Could any of the mice I buy be good enough to throw away your $150 Razer Death out of V3 Pro? It's time to find out. Already I've been dazzled. No car mice, so scroll up one. The Pusoki RGB wired gaming mouse. £8.15, so within budget. It looks great. There's professional gamers using it. This looks like it has potential. Here it is. No mention of Pisoki. It's called Why Fruitful. Not what I paid for. No rattle. Clicks are acceptable. No side button, so it's a fingertip grip mouse. Scroll wheel is a bit crooked. Let's perform a weight check. 56 grams. This is enthusiast level. Let's check the RGB. So let's try it out. This is a 125Hz gaming mouse. As you can see, the mouse sensor goes a bit weird because it can't keep up with my insane movements, but it was usable. Despite the mouse being awful to hold, it did better than expected. So my overall ratings for this mouse are... It's garbage. Next, we have a pretty in pink mouse. Let me just translate this text. It means universal. This apparently has 6,400 DPI and a 1,000 Hz polling rate for only £6.29. It weighs around 135 grams, which I cannot believe. And hold on, what's this? A Google Drive link to the mouse driver. I shouldn't really, but I'm, I'm going in. Hold on, this, this doesn't look good. I'm joking, it was fine actually. I'll show you the software in a moment. And here it is. This feels comfortable and high quality, surprisingly. There's some decent mouse feet on this as well. It's not 135 grams, but 99 grams is still pretty chunky. But let's try it in game and see how it does. But first, the mouse is 500Hz by default, so you have to set it to 1000Hz in the software, which is bad, but even the biggest manufacturers can't make good software. I'll set it to 1000Hz, which now works. Some interesting lighting choices here, such as Hoodle, Flying Star, and the tail back and forth. Anyway, let's test it in Kovacs to see how it does. Honestly, I'm impressed. It was comfortable, it was usable. Their weight does make it a bit hard to throw the mouse around on the mouse pad, but it's good. A great mouse for just £6.29. A++. Worth a buy if you have no money. Olsen and Smith is the maker of the next mouse. Honestly, they sound like a law firm. This has 4.1 stars from 69 ratings. <laughs> Never gets old. Let's take a look at their store. Oh, it's garden furniture. Seems like they're branching out a bit. This mouse also has 6,400 DPI and 1,000 Hertz polling rate for £7.99. And funnily enough, this also apparently weighs 135 grams. And unlike the last one, I can't find any software to download, so surely it's 1,000 Hertz by default, right? Well, this one doesn't feel great to hold. It's quite stiff. The side buttons are so high up, they might as well not be on the mouse. Quite heavy, clearly catering to the G502 fans. I'm honestly not looking forward to playing with this. This was advertised as 1000 Hertz, by the way. You know what? I'm done with this one. Get me out. I really need a good mouse to use. I can't do this anymore. Could my cries have been heard as we have a 64 grams, £9.99 acceptable looking mouse with 12,000 DPI, 62 grams. Oh, it said 64 earlier. Well, 60 something grams, various possibilities of polling rates. Oh God, not software again, please. I believe in you. And here it is. It's the chosen one. Damn, this mouse doesn't look cheap. It doesn't feel cheap either, but it is cheap. And look at those dazzling lights. And it's 64 grams. So let's try it out. A quick polling rate check. Wait, there's buttons on the underside of the mouse. Let me press one. Oh, it's beautiful. Video games. 
So I've been using this for about 15 minutes now and it feels okay, but I find it a bit sluggish to move around a cloth mouse pad because the feet don't seem to be the highest quality. So I thought I'd try a glass mouse pad. So the mouse feels a lot better to use on a glass mouse pad. It just glides across it with no issues apart from one big one. The stiff cable is causing issues. Luckily I have a bungee that I can use that will get it out of the way. But you can see here how the cable is really pushing this mouse around because it's so stiff. After controlling this rope a bit more, this was a very comfortable mouse to use. I cannot believe this cost just £10. So my ratings, just buy it. This just in, the budget for this video has been increased by approximately $5. And with this, I'm raising the stakes. I'm going to pick one of the highest rated gaming mice within this increased budget. I'm bringing out whatever this is called. Like who writes these names? 44 Pro Gamer. It has 3,800 ratings with an average of 4.6 out of 5. This is up to 2,400 DPI, even though it says 3,600 in the marketing images. And it says it supports Windows 10, 8, 7 and XP, which matches the marketing images. But in the name, it doesn't mention it supports Linus. And this is the box, unmarked. It could contain a finger. It has no mention of what's inside. It does contain the mouse, thankfully. The leaflet inside says it weighs between 140 and 155 grams. So a quick check, it's lying. And this feels dreadful. It feels like it's made out of spaghetti and it just drags across the mouse pad. Oh, it does have some protective film over the mouse feet, so maybe that's why. But now it feels like I'm tearing off its skin. And now this just feels worse. It's like it's trying to saw through my mouse pad. I mean, look at the state of this. This looks and feels like a big bag of sh. Well, in it goes. Oops, I missed. This is terrible. You just can't turn fast enough. It just starts slowly going down. It's like the sensor is affected by gravity in game. It will work if you turn slowly, but any speed just makes it cry. Wait, I forgot something. This mouse has a marketing video. Let's watch. We searched far and wide through the lowest of the lows, trying to find the best mouse on a budget. We came up against wonky scroll wheels, poor performance and misleading marketing. But what we did find was a one of a kind wonder, a usable, comfortable and cheap gaming mouse, known only as the Tico's Gaming Mouse. And if you're looking for an even better mouse that's only a little bit more expensive, check out the video that's on screen now.